evening, everyone. I'd like to reconvene our meeting of the Long Beach Community College uh, Board of Trustees for July 28, 2015. And I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, if everyone could please stand. And uh, I'm going to take the prerogative. I'm going to lead everyone in the Pledge of Allegiance, if you could please stand. And join me in saluting our flag and our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And obviously our thoughts and prayers of the people with in the past, since our last meeting, some of the tragedies that have taken place with some of our armed forces people. Madam Secretary, if you could please call the roll. Chiletta? Present. Virginia Baxter? Here. Jeff Kellogg? Here. Here. Sunny Zia? Here. And student trustee Alejandro Lomeli? Here. Uh, item 2.4, report on closed session items. There is nothing to report out on the closed session. Uh, but we will be uh, reconvening for a second closed session after the conclusion of this meeting. But there is nothing to report out at this time. Next item 2.5, approval of the minutes of June 23rd, 2015, regular board meeting. Can I entertain a motion to approve those minutes? So move. And a second. And a second motion by Trustee Baxter, second by Trustee Archuleta. If there's no questions or comments, Madam Secretary, please call the roll on item 2.5, approval of minutes for the June 23rd meeting. Aye. Virginia Baxter? Aye. Jeff Kellogg? Aye. Doug Otto? Aye. Sunny Zia? Aye. 2.5 carries. 2.6, introduction of special announcements. Superintendent President Oakley? Yes, uh, first of all, I want to um, uh, thank um, our personnel commissioner, Dick Gaylord, for joining us this evening. Good to see you, Dick. And uh, also, I have a retirement that I want to, uh, a retiree we want to recognize as, as our tradition. Um, Patricia House, uh, Pat, served Long Beach City College for the last 11 years. She's decided to retire. Most recently, she has served as an administrative assistant. Um, she has always been, in those 11 years, a a uh, wonderful woman, uh, easy to work with, and we will very much miss her uh, here at Long Beach City College. So please join me in congratulating Pat House on her retirement. <laughs> Fortunately, she could not be here this evening, but we wanted to recognize her anyway, and that's all I have. Thank you. Moving on to item 2.7, this is the reordering of the agenda. I've heard from no members to reorder any of the items, including the student trustee. So the agenda as, as stated will remain in the same. Uh, 2.8 is the ASB president report. I don't see, I don't, don't see her. See I, I think he's enjoying his summer. That's all right, and a smart, smart person. Uh, next item is 2.9, public comments on agenda items. Uh, three minutes be allocated. Madam Secretary, on agenda items. There's no items on the agenda. None, I have none. This That's is for non-agenda. All right, very good. Then there's no comments on public on agenda items. So now we will move forward to um, uh, item 3.1. And this is the, um, uh, the annual reorganization of the Board of Trustees. And so pursuant to the administrative regulations, the board shall elect from its members a president and vice president for the 2015-16 uh, uh, board. And so what I will take place physically, I guess, physically, or can we just change? Or no, I'm being told we physically have to swap. So uh, Superintendent President Oakley will now take over the meeting and I will move over into his seat and uh, we will then elect a president and a vice president for the board. Don't touch anything. <laughs> All right, thank you, Board President <laughs> Kellogg. Um, as it is our annual um, process, we will uh, be electing a new board president and board vice president. So pursuant to administrative regulation number 2015, 
The board shall elect from its members a president and vice president for the 2015-2016 year uh, at its annual organization meeting, which is what is taking place now. So at this point, um, I hereby open up the floor for nominations for president of the board for 2015-2016. President Oakley? Yes. I uh, hereby nominate Doug Otto for board president. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, uh, any discussion, any other nominations? Hearing none, all those in favor say, well, do we have to take a roll, Madam Secretary? Irma Archuleta? Aye. Virginia Baxter? Aye. Jeff Kellogg? Aye. Doug Otto? <laughs> Sunny Zia? Aye. All right, congratulations, Mr. Board President. Uh, let's have a round of applause for Trustee Otto. Okay, um, now I hereby open the floor for nominations for Vice President for the Board for 2015-16. Any nominations? President uh, Oakley, I'd like to nominate uh, Trustee Baxter for Board Vice President. Any uh, other nominations? May I decline? You may. I'd okay. like to decline. Any? I'd like to nominate Irma Archuleta for Board Vice President. Uh, is there a second? Second. Uh, any other nominations? Okay, hearing none, please take the roll, um, Madam Secretary. Uh, aye. Virginia Baxter? Aye. Jeff Kellogg? Aye. Doug Otto? Aye. And Sunny Zia? Nay. All right, congratulations, uh, Vice President of the Board, Irma Archuleta. Thank you. Okay, so um, at this point, uh, the board will take its new assigned seats, and I will let our board secretary assign us, uh, assign the trustees their new seats. Um, and um, once we get seated, uh, we do want to take a moment and recognize our outgoing board president. Adjustment here. This is your water. You want to for what? What are you missing? I I found it, but there was no money in it. Two votes, so okay. we have to go back. All right. We have to. I wasn't expecting to. Uh, so we'll just go here. Now, is he going 3.2? Superintendent, president. 3 .2. And now, you want to honor. Yes. Our, you. So, um, 
we want to, uh, under item 3.2, we want to recognize um, our outgoing board president. He sort of filled a unique role um, in having served two consecutive terms as board president. So much of what's happened in the last two years, you can blame on Trustee Kellogg. But, uh, and uh, everything that's good, uh, you can blame on the rest of the board. Uh, but nonetheless, it's been a pleasure to uh, serve under um, Trustee Kellogg's leadership for these two years. They've been difficult years. Uh, a lot has been accomplished. A lot has been, a lot of challenges were presented. So uh, personally, I wanna thank him for his leadership and his um, uh, just availability uh, to me. I could always count to, on him to um, call in the middle of the night on the weekend um, and uh, any point in time when anything ever came up. So, uh, and on behalf of the entire college, we want to thank you, uh, uh, Trustee Kellogg, for your service over the last two years and want to present you with this uh, plaque um, as uh, board president for 2013, 2014, and 2014. 2015. Please join me in a round of applause for Trustee Jeff Kelly. President Otto. President Otto. There we go. President Otto. I just would like to, to say thank you and, um, uh, and, and not slow the meeting down because we have a lot of important items obviously tonight. And uh, this is really great because this is, now they've got the good side. I've got, you call my good side is sitting over here instead of the middle. But, um, but I, I do want to uh, seriously touch on a few things as well. Um, as Superintendent President Oakley, uh, two years in the role as president, uh, and I think it's either my fourth or fifth time serving as the leadership of this of this board. Uh, I have to say, the last uh, this last term, two years, has been re very rewarding in many ways. And and uh, I mentioned earlier at a retreat that we we had that sometimes you are so caught up as a governing board that you just move quickly from one item to another, or sometimes from one calamity to another. You're, you're dealing in crisis management. But I, I, I truly wanted to just touch on and to put a little bit of flavor of 12 months ago when uh, I had completed my first term as president. And at the time, and, and most of you may or may not realize this, but I think it's important to do highlight that what this board has dealt with um, as far as with items. 12 months ago, uh, there was three board seats that were up for election. Uh, I was reelected. The two other incumbents decided not to seek election. Trustee Baxter, Trustee Zia, or were coming on board. Uh, that suddenly means that you have new board members. And so when we, uh, a year ago, as we were moving into this day, one year ago, that uh, we had two new members that we had to begin the process. And actually it began the previous year. And so my thanks to that board, a very different board, uh, just an experience alone. But we began the process of uh, looking at how to orient and help new board members come on board. That is not just something you say. It's a very long, lengthy process. It has a lot of details. We did that. The previous board to set in place, and then when this board came in and was, uh, was sworn in, that was one of the first things we dealt with as a board and as staff. And that in itself is not a simple process. But at the same time, we also had a board member that was elected to city council. So simultaneously, we had to deal with the fact that we were going to go through either an election process immediately or an appointment process. Either or, we had a short timeline by law that we had to start addressing that. This board then arrives, gets sworn in, and I, when I was making these comments, writing them down, it was almost like our version of the 12 days of Christmas on the 12 days of a trustee, only this was 12 months. This board then had to deal with new orientation, then suddenly an appointment process for a new board member, which is very detailed, did that. At the same time, accreditation was right on top of this board, had to deal with the fact that the a visiting team was here, dealt with accreditation at the same time as getting a new board member, going through orientation. And then we had this small item of not one, not two, but three of our labor groups all in negotiations. That's what this board got to deal with at that time. 
And to their credit, and to the entire college's credit, we worked through those all simultaneously. And it really was, as I look back going, my God, this is all the things they, they dealt with. Uh, it is pretty impressive, and I'm very proud of the fact that this is what we were all working on. Uh, also, another item thrown into the mix was board docs. What we now see here, uh, the previous board, to their, uh, to their credit, began the process of putting this in to allow us to be more transparent, to do everything, and get into place. But I remember at the meeting with the old board asking Anne-Marie Gable about, well, can we do this in, I think I gave you two weeks. And you looked at me like, well, it's really more of like six to eight months to get everyone trained. So these are all the items that this board dealt with at that time, and they dealt with it in a very professional way. And sometimes you do not sit there and, and really realize what goes on and what people really did as a governing board. We just constantly are going from a moment to the next. So I wanted to thank each and every one of you for all of those items, including the, the other things we did. We also worked on a couple of workshops. We did the one for uh, with the Brown Act for have more training on the Brown Act. We worked on another workshop that had to do with um, a hostile work environment to not have one. And all of this and then the everyday things you see on our agenda. So. It's pretty remarkable that what everything took place. And so I'd say this repeatedly, a, a chairman of a board, president of the bo board, excuse me, is only as good as the fellow board members. If all of you are not working together, then it becomes very difficult on the chairman, uh, the president. And to do all the time management, to make sure the agendas are proper, uh, that they can be dealt with in a timely fashion, all of that just adds to it because we only meet once or sometimes twice a month. That's it. So uh, I, I just wanted to make those highlights because there's so many things that took place that I don't, I don't believe sometimes people want to acknowledge the fact that, it, that this group of individuals that have jobs, have families, do other things. Uh, so I also would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to my, to my company, who it's, a, it's an employee-owned company, and every day I would walk away from that business. It doesn't mean that other people had to pick up that effort and I appreciate all their work for allowing me to do this and of course my family who uh, well, I think my wife actually is happy that I'm here because uh, she knows I'm out of the house and out of her way but it is a commitment to everyone and so um, it's been a wonderful year a lot of great things have happened at this college uh, we expect it to continue but when you think about all the things that have taken place with from the buildings to the curriculum to everything else you should all be very proud of this college and you should be proud of the, these board members because uh, I've enjoyed working with them. As I mentioned, the two years, uh, it was very different from one board to the next because they were just different boards. But at the same time, uh, you did, all did an outstanding job and I appreciate it. And I appreciate all the work that happened and that got completed. And that I look forward to, uh, to sitting over here and, um, and uh, letting President Auto run the meetings for a while because we're all different in many ways. We all run meetings different ways. I realize I have a way of doing it uh, that other people may or may not want to do, but at the same time, I always remind everyone, and I'll finish with that, uh, if it wasn't for my colleagues, the meetings would not be a success because it's only as good as each and every one of us. So my thanks to each of all of you and to the college, and I appreciate the year, and it was a great year with a lot of great results, and I look forward to the upcoming year as well. So thank you all very much for the opportunity to uh, lead this board over the past two years. Thank you. So I would like to have a round of applause for former president. <laughs> okay, agenda item 3.3, .3, selection of a representative to the county committee on school district organization. This is, a little bit like watching paint dry, but uh, uh, it's an important appointment. Yes. Oh. Camille would like to take the picture. Oh, okay. Camille? Okay. Yeah. What do you want to do? Okay. You just tell me what to do. <laughs>
So I've asked uh, Trustee Archuleta if she would be willing to be our representative to the County Committee on School District Organization, and she has agreed. Um, agenda item 3.4, am I going too fast, Jackie? Uh, you need a That's an action item, so you're going to have to have a vote. A motion needed? Yes. yes. I'll, uh, I'll make the motion to uh, have uh, Trustee Archuleta to Second. fill that position. Second. It's been moved and seconded that uh, Trustee Archuleta become our representative to the County Committee on School District Organization. Is there any discussion? It's the first motion I've made in two years. Madam Secretary, can you call the roll? Irma Archuleta? Aye. Virginia Baxter? Aye. Jeff Kellogg? Aye. Doug Otto? Aye. And Sunny Zia? Aye. Agenda item. Uh, 3.4, appointment of additional board member to the audit subcommittee. I've asked Trustee Zia if she would be willing to serve in that capacity, and her response was yes. We I, need a motion. I'd like to make a motion to uh, appoint Trustee Zia to the audit subcommittee. Second. It's not an action I item. can't do that? You can't because it's not an action. Board the, the board president has the prerogative on this issue to appoint, oh, so the board sorry. doesn't need to um, act. Okay. So stand down. <laughs> Next is agenda item 4.1, which is a presentation concerning our labor compliance program. Who's going to give this report? So I will be turning it over to Vice President Gable, but um, at the request of the board, and as been a practice over the years, we typically have a presentation over time uh, on how we're doing in labor compliance. But in this case, we wanted to, given we have three new board members and there have been questions about how we ensure that our contractors are doing um, uh, right by their employees, we wanted to have an opportunity to have a more comprehensive um, presentation. So with that, I will turn it over to uh, Vice President Gable. Thank you, President Oakley. And I'm going to uh, turn the presentation over to uh, the company who does our labor compliance program for us, the Solis Group. We have three individuals here that are going to uh, cover where we are, where we've been, and where we're going with labor compliance. And so we have Terry Solis here, um, the owner of the Solis Group. We have Joe Carroll and Brent Bishop. So Terry, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Thank you. Yes. It's not on. I can talk loud. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I think it was three years ago that I was here last, so there's some new faces and some old faces. Um, joining me, as Emery mentioned, is Brent Bishop and Joe Carroll, and why I picked them is Brent Bishop is the current project manager of your program, and Joe Carroll was a previous project manager, so we have that history. The district has had a very robust program since 2005. It has chosen to have a program even on projects that didn't require it. And additionally, the district has been extremely supportive of doing things the right way, which I will discuss a little later as it relates going after bad contractors. I think the purpose of any good program, that means construction program, starts with having good contractors. And to help it, the agency, in this case, the district, achieve its vision of better facilities. In order to achieve that, there is a dual-prong approach. An effective pre-qualification program, which we'll talk a little bit about later, and an effective labor compliance program. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Brent. Terry. 
want to discuss a little bit about the key elements that we have for the labor compliance program that we run at Long Beach. First, uh, we send the contract out to bid for the bid advertisement, and then we have a pre-bid meeting or a job block where the contractors come, and we detail the prevailing wage project, what the requirements are, and you know, let them know if they have questions, they can call us to make sure that their bidding is accurate so that they're not going to underbid the project. At times, we can run into trouble with that. And after the contractor has been se selected, we conduct a pre-construction meeting where we go over all the required documents that are in this package, kind of discuss each one, we kind of get into the apprenticeship requirements, what's required, and kind of just want to have open lines of communication with the contractor and the bond management team that's also here, and the district itself. Um, for the project, once it's been started, we have a project tracking log that we have every contractor on, and it lists all the contractors, all the required labor compliance documentation, and you can tell by looking at this uh, which contractors are not in compliance or delinquent with their middles of uh, labor compliance documentation. So it kind of helps us and the prime contractor know like, okay, we might have to delay a payment on the subcontractor who's delinquent on their paperwork. We work with all the contractors, like I mentioned. Want to make sure we have open lines of communication for everyone because it's basically the, the ultimate goal of the project is to make sure that the project is completed on time, on budget, and they have a great uh, campus building that's going to help facilitate more students and just benefit the whole community. So once construction has started, we uh, conduct job site interviews with our, with our bilingual staff, either male or female, where we interview the workers. It's not really time, with time specific material, we don't really bother with the pouring the cement, we'll take a head count. And what the site interviewer does, he hands out, him or her hand out their business card, so Sometimes when they're on site, it's a little bit difficult for them to say because their foreman's watching them or there's contractors watching them. So just after hours, if they want to contact us, they contact us, let us know, okay, I might, what am I supposed to be getting paid or just any questions that they may have to make them feel better about working on the project. We also take pictures on the project to verify the scope of work that's being performed. So if a laborer is pulling wire and he's taking a picture of a person pulling wire, we'll wait till we get the certified payroll record and then we'll determine if that work is actually out of scope or within the scope. So we want to make sure that all work scopes are pertaining to what they're actually doing on site. We get certified payroll records from the contractors. We audit the certified payroll records. We take the site interview sheets that we get from our interviewer and we match that against the certified payroll record. So hopefully the worker that we interviewed that day is going to be listed on the certified payroll. Sometimes they're not, so we follow up with the contractor and ask them you know, why he or she wasn't on the certified payroll and go from there if restitution is required. We also make sure that all the, apprentice, all the apprentices that are listed on the project or on the certified payroll records are registered and get their certifications, otherwise they need to be paid as a journeyman contractor. We request on a monthly basis for every active contractor uh, payment verification, either like, um, like a pay stub, canceled check, or a payroll register just to give us another type of verification that the worker is getting paid correctly. And if we do find a violation, we conduct an audit worksheet and a narrative to let the contractor know that, you know, we found this issue, rectify it or give uh, additional information to show that you were, they were paid correctly or not. Sometimes we may have to withhold payment, but we really don't go into that avenue. If we can't resolve the issue with the contractor one-on-one, -on -one, we do have to send it to the Division of Labor Standards Enforcement, which is called the request for the forfeiture of, request for the approval of forfeitures, which means that the DLSC uh, approves the penalty assessment and the restitution amount, and then we work with the contractor to get this uh, resolved. One of the things I want to talk about is retrieving a restitution check. One of the biggest uh, restitutions we've had was on this project. Terry will speak with that a little bit later. But a lot of the contract, or a lot of the workers who work for these contractors, may not work for them any longer. They may not be living in the state of California. So for this particular issue with Sun Peak Construction. We had our co-worker had to fly to Durango, Mexico to deliver like three checks. He flew to Nevada to deliver a couple of two more checks and to the state of Washington just to make sure that the workers are covered. Because we want to make sure the workers get the money that they're owed. We track them down as much as we can. And the best thing to do is get a copy of their ID when they come in. We want them to come into our office. It's easier to hand deliver them the check. We want to make sure they get it without having to say the contractor paid them because we don't really have a verification that way. 
So we want to hand deliver them the check, have them sign a check release for them and take their ID and give them copies of everything so at least they know that they're getting paid correctly. Sometimes we're not able to contact the worker, but non, that's rare instances on that. So what we do with that, we send the wage restitution to the state of California and hopefully the worker will come back and we can notify him to him or her to go to the DLSD to get their wage restitution that's being set up trust account for them.